Okay, today we're going to look at an algebra review. Uh, we're going to go through a few problems and then uh, hopefully this will help you with the algebra review sheet. Uh, the first one is right up here. We're going to solve for x in all of these equations. So if you can see the first equation right here is ax equals b. So a couple of general rules for uh, solving for algebraic equations um, is that we can move variables um, as long as there's it's all uh, multiplication and division on a diagonal across an equal sign. So what that means is this: if I have a setup where I have um, you know some variables um, in a fraction here equaling a variable in a fraction here, um, I can move those variables uh, top to bottom across that equal sign and that's because I'm dividing and multiplying. So say for example that um, I have an x over y equals uh, 3 over 2, something like that. Well if I multiply both sides by 2, 2 goes from the denominator here up to the numerator here. And if I divide both sides by 3, if you notice the threes cancel leaving you with one and that brings the three from the numerator here to the denominator over here so if we understand that principle where we can move a variable on a diagonal across an equal sign it makes some of these um, you know a lot easier so this one here a is in the numerator because again this would be like this all over one so if we move it across the diagonal across the equal sign on a diagonal, we can isolate x and x then would equal b over a. Or essentially what I'm doing is dividing both sides by a. So again, another way to, to look at that is if I divide this by a and this by a, a divided by a is 1, so I'm left with x is equal to b over a. Number 2. This one is probably the most commonly missed um, example a lot of students will say that well x equals d over f it's obvious you just divide both sides by f well you could divide both sides by f but if you did that so if I divide by f and divide this side by f f divided by f is 1 so now what is equal to d over f not x it's 1 divided by x So this is very commonly missed. So let's start over. We have d is equal to f divided by x. Again, think about moving on a diagonal. If this is in the denominator, I need to move it to the numerator. So I'm going to move it up on the diagonal, and I can move d down on the diagonal, because this is like d over 1. So therefore, I have x is equal to f over d, which is just the opposite of this. Everybody see that? This was what most people think x is equal to, but this is what it's actually equal to. Okay? Again, if you're going to set this up and do it as two steps, the first step I'd multiply both sides by x. So x divided by x is 1, and then divide both sides by d. So now d divided by d is 1, so that I have x equals f over d. Again, just another way to look at it. Let's go to the next one. Here we have an addition. And here's our x that we want to isolate for. So the first thing we need to do is, is get rid of this part. So to do that, I'm going to subtract AB from both sides. So now I have D minus AB equal to 1 half XT squared. Multiply by 2. Make sure you use this parentheses. We're multiplying this whole side by 2 and multiplying this whole side by 2. 2 times a half is 1, so they cancel. So now I have 2d minus 2ab equal to xt squared. Final thing is to divide by t squared. So again, I'm, I'm taking and dividing by t squared. They cancel. So now x is equal to 2d minus 2ab all over t squared. And you could factor out the 2 and leave it as 2 times the quantity d minus ab, but either way is fine. 
Let's look at this example. So in this one, um, the first thing that we should do is get rid of the denominators. So what could we multiply by to get rid of all of the denominators to make it a little bit easier for us? Well, we look for the least common multiple of these three. So if I have 2a, ax, and x, my least common multiple of those is 2ax. So I'm going to multiply all of these terms by that same amount so it doesn't change the actual quantity um, of what's there, um, or the ratio of quantities, I should say. So if I look and I put this up here, uh, what cancels between 2a and 2ax? Well, the 2a does. So it's essentially like multiplying by x by this top term because the 2a and the 2a here will cancel when I multiply there. Or if you need uh, help seeing that, I'll just do it like this. 2ax times 5x squared all divided by 2a is what happens when I distribute that to this over here. So in that case, 2a cancels with 2a, so I have x times 5x squared, which is equal to 5x cubed. Distribute. I get 2ax divided by ax. That reduces to 2. That's what I said. Reduces 2. Plus this times this, so I'm just going to leave it as 2ax times 3, all divided by x. The x is reduced, and I get 2a times 3, which is 6a. Now it should be pretty easy to solve for x. First thing is divide both sides by 5. It becomes a 1, so I have x cubed is equal to 2 plus 6a over 5. And then I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. Cube root of x cubed is x. So I have the cube root of 2 plus 6a all over 5. The other way you could show a cube root is by a 1 third power. So a fractional exponent is the same thing. So I could show this as 2 plus 6a over 5 to the 1 third power. So either of these is acceptable for an answer. And one more. Again, isolating for x. First thing I need to do is move the CS over. So d minus CS is equal to 1 half ax squared. Multiply both sides by 2. 2 times a half cancels. Divide both sides by a. a's cancel. To get rid of the x squared, we did it on the previous problem. In this case, we're going to take the square root. So all said and done, I have x equal to, and then I look over here, because again, the square root and that cancel. I get a square root of a quantity, 2 times d minus cs over A. And again, just a different way to show it. You could distribute this, make your one half an exponent, or your square root an exponent of one half. Hope this helps. Thanks.